You know, the, when you make a movie, which the tradition is, you kind of get in a limo and you go out opening night and you go from theater to theater. How's it playing? You talk to the you know, theater owners and the ushers and stuff, and you go in. The night this opened, 1987, we went out, first theater, we walked in, there was about 12 people. <laughs> <laughs> they were liking it. <laughs> there was 12. And then out in the valley, went someplace and there was like one guy up here, and three back there. And, it was really depressing. <laughs> so, uh, the moral of the story, though, is it really means a lot to me that you guys uh, uh, react the way you do. Thank you very much. <laughs> 20 years for the movie to find its audience. Did you, <laughs> did you expect it to be a cult hit, or is this a complete surprise to you? Well, I, I, I don't think you set out to make a cult hit, unless you're you know, David Lynch or Jim Jarmusch. Or if I made a movie, I would set out to make a cult hit. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I mean, this was a real mainstream movie. I mean, we, we'd hoped it would be a mainstream movie, but the truth of it, and this sounds a little bit like I'm patting myself on the back, it was a little ahead of its time, because kids couldn't come see it. Kids ultimately loved it, but they couldn't come see it because it was PG-13. And older kids thought it was a kid's movie. I mean, teenagers and adults, it was a kid's movie, I don't see that. So. There's some hot chicks in broad panties. I mean, that's, that's good enough for teenagers, right? Yeah, Rudy, he's a cool guy. Yeah. Well, he's cool to 12 year olds. No, I think he's pretty cool now. I think you would all agree that Rudy's still pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, Ryan Lambert, who plays Rudy, has actually got a rock band now up in San Francisco, so he's proven to actually continue to be cool. He asks me, comes tonight, he goes, I'll see if I can make it. He's smoking his, you know, blow cigarettes. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, the casting process and how you uh, put together the, the most awesome cast that you did? Mm -hmm. uh, well, Peter Hyams was my producer. Yeah. We, we had a... a we had a somewhat contentious relationship. He was a real father figure to me, and, and ultimately, I think uh, the movie really benefits from him having taken under his wing. But a lot of the decisions were him like, I think this is going to be great. Like, uh, okay. <laughs> but to his credit, in some cases, I, I did the same thing and said, uh, you know, here's who I want, and go good. Um, so there wasn't a lot of disagreement. We, the important thing with the kids was we had to we had to like him and we had to believe him. I hate movie kids. <laughs> you know the ones I'm talking about in commercials. Hey, Dad! <laughs> and you know that they're going to live a horrible life. <laughs> Just drugs. It's going to be really bad. Uh, how how was it working? You had working with children and animals. Uh, how, how was that? You forgot special effects. And special effects. <laughs> when you have you know real, I mean we had a very professional crew. It's it's a breeze. You know really if if everybody knows what they're doing. Uh, I have, I have kind of a very of, funny answer, but <laughs> answer. Um, I have kind of a slightly perverted question. Um, perverted. perverted, a little bit, yeah. Uh, so they say in the beginning that uh, the movies, uh, the were werewolf has to wear pants in the movies made in the '40s to ho show to hide his wolf dork. Um, but this movie was made in the '80s, so why was there no wolf dork? <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting because he does. He comes back till the pieces uh, come back together. And he's got his pants back on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone else ever thought of that, but I was noticing at this time that he was wearing pants. So. Well, let's see if Benicio Del Toro shows his. <laughs> um, I wish I had more exciting questions. Kind of... those, are fan those are fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, you, so we're also showing uh, Night of the Creeps tonight. <laughs> people are here to see the Monster Squad. <laughs> and how many are here to see Night of the Creed? Yeah. Okay, here's the Night of the Creed story. We couldn't go out on a limo to the theaters in LA to see it play because it did not play in LA. Yeah. Actually, went to Times Square. I got to see the you know the real shit kicking like you know late night. Whoa! Don't go in that door. <laughs> I think this, that's what this is going to be. Uh, <laughs> see, the, uh, 
the resurrection of this movie started about two years ago at the Alamo Draft House, which this is a very similar yeah. crowd. You guys are awesome. The difference at the Alamo is you can drink beer. <laughs> 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 Afterwards. Uh, I have, so, uh, can you talk a little bit about Night of the Creeps? It's such a it's such a great movie, and it's again, I think you're just ahead of your time because I think that that movie just is so great, and it really holds up today, and it's just super awesome. I appreciate that. I, I have some problems with it. There's stuff in it that I really, you know, I win some when I look at it. There's other stuff that's so sort of whacked out, and like I can't believe I did that because <laughs> uh, nobody was telling me what to do. I was like, wow, I'm the director. Here I go, and you know, this you know, 60 year old grips like, what? I want to put Atkins on a dolly and spin him around the room. Like, oh, yeah. 